Grace and peace of Christ be with you all. Good morning and happy Wednesday. If you caught yesterday's devotion, then then you know that we're taking a break from talking about the whole uh, pandemic social distancing thing. Instead, we're devoting our devotion time to more a more pressing spiritual current event, namely Lent. As you've heard me mention more than a few times, Lent is a, is a season of introspection. Unlike the celebratory season of Christmas or the anticipatory season of Advent, Lent is a time for stepping away from all your usual busyness and distractions and, and getting away to spend time intentionally examining your life in light of the cross. Lent at its core is about meeting God in the depths of your being and intentionally asking him to point out anything within you that needs to be fixed, recovered, or simply let go of. After all, no matter how saintly we are or think we are, we all have something that needs fixing and or gotten rid of. Put differently, we've all got a little or perhaps a lot of the prodigal son or prodigal daughter in us. And speaking of the prodigal son, For the purposes of today's devotion, I'd like for us to zero in on just one verse, verse 14 of Jesus' prodigal son parable. Check out Luke 15, verse 14. It says, About the time his money ran out, a great famine swept over the land, and he began to starve. And you know, the longer I live, the more I've come to believe that everybody, no matter how perfect their life appears to be on the outside, is recovering or in need of recovery, from something. For some, it's an addiction. For others, it may be a, a physical or emotional ailment of one sort or another. And there are, there are others who need recovery from the ongoing painful memory of a past sin. Not in every instance, but oftentimes our recovery begins at the proverbial rock bottom, that painful dead end where rationalizing and excuse making runs out and all that's left are sin's painful consequences and the lingering regret of a squandered opportunity. Although nobody in their right mind would intentionally want to take up permanent residence at rock bottom, it's only at the bottom that we can finally see with stark clarity the reality of a better way to live, a reality we can't see during our spiraling journey downward. In the case of the young man in Jesus' parable, his rock-bottom clarity came to him while dining on the leftovers of the pigs he'd been feeding. According to Jesus, it was there with the pigs that he came to his senses. Do you remember the story? It was in the son's rock-bottom pigsty that his thoughts finally turned to his father's servants. Although their life was a far cry from the abundant lifestyle he'd squandered, At least they had enough to eat. He was there in the face of that now clear reality that his repentance and climb from the bottom finally began. It began with the decision to go home and confess his sin against both God and his father. Assuming he was no longer worthy of his father's love, his only hope was that of being hired on as one of his father's servants. And sure, it wasn't much of a life, but at that point, mere existence was the best he thought he could hope for. As it turned out, even though his plan asked much of his father, it was nothing compared to what his forgiving, compassionate father was willing to give him. You know, no matter whether we're journeying back from rock bottom or a a point somewhat less dramatic, the same applies to us. In whatever the case, our repentance and recovery asks much of God, but not nearly as much as God is willing to give us. As the formerly lost son learned, when we willingly submit our wayward selves to God, he doesn't merely recover us by providing for our mere survival. Like the son's loving father, God celebrates us back to life, back into the abundance of his life-giving grace. As we approach the final week of what's been a really weird 2020 Lenten journey, My hope is that each of you will intentionally spend some time of your social distance isolation time to opening yourself to your father's loving scrutiny and humbly asking him to point out anything within you that needs fixing, recovering, or simply needs to be let go of so that you too may experience the full measure of your father's abundant life-giving grace. As we continue through this strange trying time, 
Let's keep on looking up. Let's keep on loving one another. God's got this, and we'll see you tomorrow.